Hello and welcome to the Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast with me, clinical somatic educator and founder of Total Somatics, Heidi Hadley. The Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast has been designed to help you gain a deeper understanding to how your mind and body work. You will learn about your amazing mind and body and why over time you can feel pain, recurring injuries and poor posture. Within this podcast, I will teach you why this doesn't have to be your future or the norm for you. Would you like to learn how to reduce pain, move freely and gain a new lease of life? Let's get started. Hello and welcome back. Now, just before we get started with this extract today, I just want to share with you the opportunity that as we approach September, every year Total Somatics has the theme Somatic in September. And this year I'm going to be sharing things with you within the Total Somatics YouTube channel. And also if you're listening to this on your preferred podcast channel um, or platform, you can also share that way. I'm also going to be sharing some resources with you um, and getting you just to bring a greater deal of somatic awareness into your activities through the month of September and on and beyond. So if this is something that resonates with you and also it makes you think of somebody else that you'd like to share this month with, please let them know. So by all means, uh, give them the details to the Total Somatic YouTube channel. But also don't forget to actually like, share, subscribe and press the notification bell within the Total Somatic YouTube channel so you can get the information as soon as it's released. So in today's extract, I'm going to be sharing with you how pandiculation, neuroplasticity and nervous system regulation all come into play. And again, I've put this extract into the podcast series here because I am, it's so wonderful. I'm getting so many questions at the moment that I thought, why don't I just pull some information that's within the Total Somatics membership within the workshop and recording section. Just take a little extract from some of the um, information there so you can benefit from it. But obviously, if you're a Total Somatics member, you will see that there is so much more around this entire extract. So if you are in the membership, please enjoy the rest of the context to what I'm going to be discussing. But as we look at today, we're going to be looking at how important pandiculation is as we bring it into our activities, but also the power of neuroplasticity, the wiring within your brain. Because that's what's really important is how pandiculation, neuroplasticity and nervous system regulation all marry together. So let's get started with this extract. And I would love to hear your views in the comments below afterwards. And so that's why today I'd like us to look at the process that I teach people to actually make changes at a brain level. Remember what we've learned from the very beginning, that your pain and we know stress, it's all about your perception. It's about your, the story, the accounts, who you are as an individual. Your brain is actually what is perceiving your pain. So even if we have tissue damage, it's still everything from neuroscience and pain science, it's all coming from your brain. So surely if we want to do things such as learn how to get more efficient with our movement, how to relax tight muscles, We're best to go to the software. We're both best to go up here to our brain. And so that's why there's a three-step process that I teach you. Now, that three-step process is called pandiculation. Now, you may be familiar with that name if you've listened to many of my podcasts. Um, If you've also joined many of my free events in the past, or you've read my eBooks or watched my free webinars. So the power of pandiculation is amazing because the process of pandiculation is what is going to change the the wiring and the landscape in your brain. That's how we make lasting change. And when it's repeated on a regular basis, when we are consistent with our practice, it will override the old habits that we had before, which at times can then start to create those recurring pain and injuries. Now, do you recall last time I mentioned that we want to view our soma like a garden? It takes time. We need to nourish. Things will blossom and bloom at different times, not on our timeline, but when the garden is ready. The same with our soma. So when we use pandiculation, when we use mindset and mindfulness principles, they're like different tools of the trade that we would use for gardening. They're going to help blossom and grow and nourish 
our soma. And things will develop and change and shift at different times. See, it's not about the quick fix. It's about lasting lifestyle changes. That's what total somatics is all about. That's what mindset, movement and mindfulness is all about too. It's making lasting changes. That's when we're going to see the, the, the results. And so if we contrast that to stretching, stretching doesn't change anything at a brain level. It is a temporary fix. It is a bit like the old mindset system where we talk about pulleys and systems and tight muscles and we stretch. We, we kind of moved on in science and we've moved on in research since the old days of stretching, which is why now, you know, we've had things in the past where people used to say stretch before you exercise. And we now know that that does nothing to the output and strength of the muscle. They now just say movement, just start warming up, moving your muscles. So can you see that stretching is becoming a little bit archaic? And it's really about us and our mindset. And are we willing to move with the times, learn these new techniques so that we can stay with our finger on the pulse to the real medicine of, of movement and also neuroscience and pain science? And so that's why there have been a few questions about recurring pain and injury. And that's the key thing is if you learn pandiculation, if you allow me to teach you pandiculation with my cues as well, I encourage you to start listening and noticing how you move, how things aren't moving so much when you pandiculate. And when you do this, this is when you start to understand how your body, how your movements are truly, truly functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. And so pandiculation is an embodiment practice. What I teach you is techniques. So you're going to be contracting your muscles. You're going to be lengthening your muscles. We don't stretch, we lengthen. We go to the end of that natural movement. And then at the end, we rest. So that's the third phase. So there's this full integration. There's this full shift of movement and input that is coming in from your muscles to your brain. And your brain is starting to rewire. You see, when we start to wake up your brain and get your brain involved with movement, then it increases basically all of your internal and external perception and awareness, your, um, how you move in space, how you balance, how you coordinate. You can't get that from stretching because stretching doesn't get you at a brain level. It literally is just a temporary fix. It might feel nice at the time, but it's not re-educating your brain to muscle connection. We want to be able to get the belly of your muscle, which is the powerhouse for movement and strength. We want that to have the resilience of knowing when to contract, when to lengthen, when to contract, when to lengthen. You don't get that with stretching. So we don't get that feedback. And again, the neuroscience will show you that. So if we also consider an embodiment practice with pandiculation, this is again tying into some questions that came in uh, through the survey. And people were asking things like, I've got like a 14 hour work day, how can I fit things in? Other people were talking about their breathing and anxiety and finding it very difficult to get to sleep. So this is where when we're looking at pandiculation, when we're looking at total somatic movement, mindset, and mindfulness, it's not about just doing that practice on the floor for like 20, 30 minutes, 40, 50 minutes, whatever it is, and then going off and doing our own thing. It's about an embodiment practice, meaning that we are taking in that information. and We're looking at how we can work in different settings to incorporate that. We're listening all the time to the sensory feedback and the information that's coming to us. So when we start to feel shifts in our breathing, when we start to feel this overwhelming anxiety and stress, the techniques that I teach you actually help to regulate your nervous system so that we don't have to get to a point where we're hyperventilating. Because if you learn how to read the little subtle cues that are coming from your soma, there are skills and techniques that you can incorporate, you know, sitting at your desk at work or going, sitting on the toilet quietly and having a few moments to just do a few breath work techniques that I teach you, a few regulation techniques that I teach you as well to regulate and accelerate that homeostasis or that state of balance, trying to get your nervous system back into a bandwidth that you can operate and focus on instead of being in that stress response. And as we know, when you're in the stress response, your cortisol levels, which is a hormone, that increases. When the cortisol levels are high, that increases your inflammation, your pain perception, everything. Can you see that huge circle that comes back in? So that's why 
it's not just movement, it's mindset and mindfulness and how we operate throughout the day. And I'd like to just share with you um, a very real example that was only in the last week or so of somebody that I saw here in, cl in clinic in South Australia. Now, this person works in the emergency services and she just said, oh, you know, I've just not been doing any of my somatic movements. And quite understandably, as you can imagine, working in the emergency services at the moment, they are completely under a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress going on, working lots of different hours. So it's quite understandable that she felt that she just wasn't getting her somatic movement in. And as a result, with the ongoing stress that she was feeling, it was starting to tighten up her body. However, when we started to dissect different ways that she could actually incorporate in her day, it can actually be achieved. It doesn't mean she has to get on the floor and, and do like pandiculations. She could be in the kitchen when she might have five minutes and she could do a nervous system regulation exercise. It could be elsewhere, like in the car on the way into work or on the way from work. She could just sit in the car for a few moments before she sets off and do a specific like regulation, regulation for her breathing. She could do rib release techniques. There are also pandiculations she could do with her shoulders and her back without having to get on the floor. You see, what you can do is when you learn these principles, when you are able to read the feedback from your amazing Soma, you can just weave them throughout your day. And before you know it, you can see why it becomes a lifestyle shift and change because you are now embodying this practice. It's not just about, and, and seriously, over the years, I've seen so many people, they do meditation and they do all sorts of different movements and they'll spend an hour doing all that. And then they jump up and they go back to their new, normal activities. And that's not a lifestyle change, is it? It's, it's literally what they did for that hour was really nice, but in actual fact, it's now created this bigger stress pattern because their nervous system's gone back into overdrive. So can we create more of a lifestyle shift and change? And can you see how even if you've got the busiest circumstances at the moment with work or other commitments, there will be opportunities. If you look in your day, how often are you scrolling through like social media? How often are there things that you could be actually replacing, which aren't really serving you well with bringing in some total somatic movement mindset and mindfulness principles, again, about regulating your nervous system. And also I teach people a lot more about balance. We need balance. It's always a work-life balance, isn't there? There's a lot of pressure on people's shoulders at the moment to keep work going. But however, when we start looking at those parts of our lifestyle too, this is where we can start to, to make changes, when we start to prioritize our health and well-being. So the thing is, over the years, there's different people that have come into my life. And with this, they've come in with different factors that I've been able to create a clinical practice, a clinical method of treatment, but also the adaptability to look at different people and different somas and work with them and how they are presenting that particular day. And that's why I have actually created the Total Somatics membership. And this is why I'm sharing this with you now, because a lot of the questions in the survey were talking about specifics such as like hamstring issues, how to lengthen tension in their back, talking about the, the, the sway back, how we can get a very tight lower back, and also how there's things such as like sciatica, um, hip flexor discomfort, knee and hip pain, shoulder pain, even things such as gut issues, rib issues, breathing, the, the, the anxiety and the tension that's all around breathing. It's intertwined, isn't it? Anxiety, breathing all comes together. And yet I teach in the membership things such as rib mobility, getting that motion back. So when your ribs have that nice bit of movement, your, your lungs can inflate and they can take in more oxygen to nourish all your tissues, every single cell in your body. Also, there's different types of ways that I teach you how to regulate your nervous system. There are eye techniques, there are breathing techniques, there's movement techniques. There's so many things and it's really a buffet style. You choose what you feel you need because every soma is different. Some people will really resonate with certain things, other people, they prefer other things. And that's why it is like a buffet. So there's like a structured path to encourage you to learn how to do movement mindset and mindfulness with total somatics. However, there is this rich 
uh, vault of information. And I do regular monthly workshops within the membership. I hold workshops specific to what is wanting to be learned within the membership. So I'm listening all the time to members. I also do monthly Q&A sessions with the members. So if they've got any burning issues, any burning questions, I'm there to support them. And I'm constantly in our private Facebook group supporting them there too. So you see, it's about that support. Do you remember in the first video, we talked about the perception of pain and how one of those factors is the support network that you have, the support systems you have in place for your health and well-being. Are you being actively listened to or do you feel you're talked at? Because that's what I bring to Total Somatics is actively listening to you, providing a service and support to help you improve with your health and well-being. So wasn't that interesting, that extract there? So as I mentioned previously, let me know in the comments below what your takeaway points were from that extract. What are those sort of eureka moments that really stand out to you? And as always, if you really would love to join me within the Total Somatics membership, if you go to totalsomatics.com, click on the Join Now page, and you'll see that if the membership doors are currently closed, please leave your details on the wait list. And very soon we'll be opening the membership doors. So please look out for that because it'll be open for a short amount of time. And that gives you the opportunity to come in and join the membership. So that's totalsomatics.com and click on the join now page and you can just leave your details there so i look forward to seeing you very very soon as we start somatic in september series uh, which is going to be so cool and i can't wait to hear all your feedback too so see you soon all my love and very best wishes take care bye thank you for joining me today if you've enjoyed this episode please leave a rating and also forward this on to somebody you know will benefit to learn more about pain relief, plus how to improve your health and well-being, go to totalsomatics.com. Until next time, take care.